Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do beer stuff here. Who would have thunk it? Massive Beers. We do beer stuff here. Today's the day. Bourbon County. 2023. Late to the game. You know, in my in my salad days. I'm actually thinner than, than those days. Um, I would have rushed this, man. I would have I would have hunted this down. And it'll release the day of Black Friday. I don't play those games anymore. Um, not that I yuck anybody's yum. Play those games all you want. But I really do like to review the base of this beer. Pretty much every year. Um, the the variants, I, I just can't take it upon myself to spend that level of money um, on this beer. Um, you know, this base here. And this is going to be a weird talking point. I'm curious because I've heard a couple things from other people, but we'll talk about it in a second. This base here is typically a year-round easy get for me. Easy. Like, easy. I could walk... I Like, little tiny bodega shops that don't really carry craft beer and go 24-7. Round a year, I can pick this up. So, Bourbon County is actually a beer I drink quite a bit. And I actually vacillate between different vintages quite often, you know. You know, you know 2020, um, 2022, 2023. Um, 2021 and 2020 I can find on a relative regular so I'll pick them up like once a month and I'll get one I'll be like oh this is kind of fun um, so I'm very in tune with this beer so when it was coming out this year I was very uh, I was like okay you know I'll go pick up a bottle and I'll review it and the weirdest thing about this is that this base version was by far and away the hardest for me to find and uh, since pre- Pre-hype, not pre-hype, during the hype, hype time, um, but with a twist, and that I could have pretty much bought any single variant, except for Prop, which is only Chicago only, I could pretty much buy any variant anywhere I went. They just didn't have the base. Like, there was, like, every single variant was available, you know, and again, I'm not going to, you know, you're talking about vacillating in between, you know, high, high teens, 20s to 50 bucks a bottle. I don't mess with that stuff really all that much. Um, but I was really just looking for this. And then, lo and behold, a week after it came out, I just bumped into one of them. I picked it up, and here we are. I did talk to a couple different people, a couple different beer tubers. They were like, you know, yeah, it's kind of been that way by me, too, in different states. So I guess there might have been a distribution snafu on the base, and that might have been why. Um, so your mileage may vary. But we're going to dive into it. What are we drinking right now? We're drinking bourbon canning brand uh, stout. Stout aged in bourbon barrels. This is the 2023 version. Um, for those playing along at home, this is the 4.6% GI. I know these are there's codes down here. And there's some kind of codex and my magic decoder ring that makes... Oh, it's the Heaven Hill version or something. I don't know. 4.6% alcohol by volume. And it says on here... Okay, on the back. Notes of vanilla, cocoa, cocoa, cherry, caramelized sugar, and almond. I don't think I've ever got almond from this. Um, done and done. I will say this. I say it every year. One of the best and prettiest bottles in the game. I know it's AB and Bev. I know people get annoyed. Why am I doing it that way? I make things hard. Um, but I... I hated their rebranding just because I, I, you know, big, big burly beers like this, I really do like to have in the smallest, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, smallest serving size I can get, um, and by that I mean 12 ounce bottles is better than this bottle, um, but as far as what they did, how they did it, the, the embossing, this little flap over here. The, the way the bottle laid out, I think, is really one of the better. When you have a, you know, multi-million dollar company that is just, you know, you could do whatever you want with uh, marketing-wise. <laughs> it's just a beautiful bottle. It's classic now. You, from across the room, you know you're seeing Bourbon County. I think this is, like, one of my favorite bottle signs of all time. Beer-wise... That looks like Bourbon County stout. I mean, it's big, it's rich. There's not a big head on it. There was a head with a bit, a bit of pour. Let me give it a swirl here. You can see you get a little bit of a, a little bit of head retention back. The head comes off. Um, 
like deeper than malt ball, less than my coffee, with a tinge of red to it. So it definitely has mahogany tones floating around, but it definitely looks part of a big old burly stout. A little nasally, coming off of sickness, but let's see what the nose has. That's Bourbon County, baby. It really is a great stout. And honestly, the pasteurization of this beer, take it for what it's worth. You know, I mean, you know, the whole infected thing. You know, in a perfect world, that would have never happened, and we would have never had it pasteurized. I understand why they do it. But I feel like there is, at least aromatically, homogenization when it comes to this beer now. It's a beautiful homogenization, but the, the, the difference between year to year, and I'm not doing a side-by-side, -side, so I can't be 100% sure here, it smells very much like all the Bourbon Counties I've been drinking over the past year. You know, it's just this rich... Big, huge stout with this really omnipresent spirit and barrel involved. The coconut's there, the vanilla's there, that rubbed chocolate barrel char thing's there. The spirit, the bourbon portion of the show, it's called Bourbon County. You want it to be big bourbon forward, that's a great thing. But everything here is in, is in violent levels, but appropriate levels. You know, it's not like, oh, it's barrel this and then behind it is... No, it's huge peaking red <laughs> peaking lines of audio um you know beer barrel spirit in a very beautiful way you know the biggest takeaway I, I take from this every time i drink it and while there is variance on the taste on the nose it's quite similar is the level of the So other beers have the same characteristics as this. You know, the beer, the 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 beer itself, the 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 malt of the beer, um, the ABV of the beer, the spirit of the beer, the spirit of the booze, the barrel, the booze, all of them are quite boisterous. But there's almost like a Perfect. This goes into because I've been watching a couple of videos about audio mastering lately, and it makes sense. It's a difference between hearing a really well done song and versus that song professionally mastered. In that you know each individual note and in sound and hi hat and you know bass, uh, you know uh, strum of the bass, you know everything about that is just at a level that is just not audible clear and crisp and it's like it's pro audio is basically what I'm talking about I talked about this previous it's not a new concept in my reviews this is it's just when you hear pro sound on pro equipment it's just like you're just like man it's just it's loud but it's it's not overly loud it's not blasting but it, but it's also hyper clear and that's kind of the way every note in this comes off whether it be that barrel char or the coconut or the roasted malts or the bourbon in here it's very distinct and very clear but they're all working together in concert we can use it it's kind of appropriate when i'm using these kind of adjectives but they're so distinctly pick a partable you know, you can be like, that's that there, that's that vanilla I love, that's that coconut I love, that's the spirit I love, that's the barrel try I love, and it's not mistakable. I think that's the best trick that this beer pulls off. I think it's the great trick that a lot of great barrel-aged beers pull off. I just think when you think about ABM Bev, when you think about Goose Island, when you think about beers like this, you know, to do this on a consistent level from year to year to year, again, the homogenization, the pasteurization kind of helps that a little bit because you're you're kind of taking away a little bit of variance. I still, again, wish that existed, but it just has this kind of mm, welcoming aggressiveness to it from all corners. We're just going to dive in. Cheers, y'all. Mm, okay. It's funny. It's funny. It's delicious. Um, a bit a skosh boozy. It's a 15% bare lights down. It's supposed to be. I'm not going to knock for that. The funny part about this is 
is that when I read that label, the last part is like almond. I'm like, I don't think I've ever gotten almond from this. Maybe it's placebo effect, but I feel like I'm getting a big like almond component off of this, a big nutty almond component off of this. And I don't think I've ever even said the word almond when it's come to a bourbon county beer, as, as a, well, opposed to some of the almond variants that they've had. We actually did a re age review of uh, when it had almonds in it um, at Beer Tube Balooza. Steven Seller, actually, it was just posted on NerdSense channel. Go check that out. I relinked it, but if you missed it, go check it out. But that's probably my biggest takeaway here is this almond slash marzipani thing that I don't remember getting all that much from a lot of bourbon counties. I like it. I'm not going to sit here and say it's like blowing me away and it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm getting this almondness. And I like it. I dig it. It almost comes off a little bit more adjuncty, like a variant rather than Bourbon County, I guess. It'd probably be my biggest takeaway on this beer. I like this. It's a little sharp. Now, that's a little bit of a locality bias for me, I guess you'd say. In that, I since I do get to have these on the regular, since I do get to jump between, because more often than not, when I go to a place that has Bourbon County on a shelf, it's not, oh, I'm going to grab Bourbon County. It's like, which one do I want? Do I want the 2022 or the 21 or which one do I, you know, so I bounce between them all. And there's always a subtle variance. And this one's not going to be any different. There is definitely a distinctiveness between this and the other ones. But I do have the luxury of age on those i think it, this comes off a little, little bit sharper my experience maybe even over the past couple years with these by sharper i just mean the flavors are less cohesive even though it's a really great beer it's a i'm not trying to diminish it at all at 11.99 which is what i pay for this which is what i can get it at any time i think it's a no-brainer value pick delicious hard pressed to find something better than this at the a, a price level per ounce let's put it that way um is one i'm really curious to see where it ends up in a year or two because i think it could be one of the best ones ever i just think it has a little bit of settling to do and this is again me being ultra nitpicky so beautiful mouthfeel as, uh, as always Thick, but not overly thick. It's not Florida's 3C stick, but it has a nice density to it. There's a decent amount of bittering here. I think you're getting it from a carbonic thing. I think you're getting it from a hop. I think you're getting it from roast malt, and you think, think you're getting it from a barrel. The beer's very, very sweet. It's a big, huge, burly beer. Big, sweet components coming from that barrel, that coconut, that vanilla. Then you have the spirit in there. You need that bittering to balance that off. So that's a good thing, not a negative thing. It's more Russian imperial stout than base stout. When you go to the spirit, it's like a classic, generic, what I would think of when it comes to bourbon. I'm not a bourbon person. I can't sit here and talk intelligently about bourbon. But what I can say is, this is what I imagine bourbon tastes like in a barrel-aged beer that came out of the bourbon barrel. Um, and the barrel is the start of the show here. Again, like it's on the level of all the other things, but it is that level of that vanilla-coconut combination with that nice, chocolatey, charry barrel roasted toasty barrel in combination with the you know the roasted of the beer itself the malt itself kind of accentuates that but it is the barrels really what i think takes this beer and puts it over the top in this year and previous years as i said though i want to see this with a little bit of time on it as card carrying member of i love aging beer you know Barrel aged beers aren't necessarily the best, you know, long haul, long haul agers. When they're pasteurized like this, you're not going to really have a crazy overt negative portion of the show here. It's it's neutered to a certain extent. But a lot of these sharpness pieces tend to get a little bit rubbed and rounded. And that's where I think this one would really shine. It'd probably be, if I'm going to just off the top of my head talk about over the last five, four years... It might be my least favorite of the past four years. I think when was the last time I had a base that I was like, eh, was it 2018? I don't remember. But anyway, it's a, it's a, it's not at the top. Let's put it that way. But because the other ones are stellar, not because this is negative by any stretch of imagination. I'm going to be buying this again. Let's put it that way. But there's something about it that has me like, I think this might end up being one of the better ones with a year or two on it. A hunch. 
not really any kind of like scientific data to surround that hunch, but there's something about it. I dig it. I dig I dig the ageability of this, at least on the first sips. Let's put it that way. So quintessential Bourbon County through and through. There's an almond thing. They put it in my brain. I don't think I've really gotten much out of the base before, but apparently it's here now. And while it is sharper and a little bit less rounded edges than what I remember previous iterations being, sharper is probably a better way to put it in rather than rounded edges. Those are rounded edges that come out, I think, would be a pretty... It, the prospects are pretty cool, let's put it that way. But again, you're talking about availability, eleven ninety nine. Whenever I can get it, multiple variants. It really is one of the better bang for your bucks for this level of stout. You know, a lot of people make stouts that are really tasty, but a lot don't. And the ones that do typically are in a bottle this size around 20 bucks. So, eight bucks cheaper. And I'm guaranteed tastiness. That's not me saying don't buy those other bottles. I'm always going to buy those other bottles. But there's something has to be said with the consistency and availability. Um, you know, AB and Bev be damned. You can say whatever you want. But this is something I pick up quite regularly. And this iteration, while it might not be my favorite for the past couple years, is something I think can age into something great. And I'm definitely going to pick it up again. There you go. Berman County Stout 2023. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? It's one of your favorite ones, one of your lesser favorite ones. What my tasting notes similar to yours. What do you think about those variants that are pricey? Can you find this as easy as I can? Or as hard as I can? Or as not hard. Is it as difficult to find it? As, uh, the funny part is I picked this up two days ago. And since then I saw it two other places. So apparently the, um, the distribution thing got fixed anyway so all that fun stuff down there goose island have you been to the brewery have you had their beers what's your favorite variant of all time goose island whatever's down there hopefully you enjoyed the review hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of Bourbon county right now hope to see you next time cheers y'all